You know, I was sitting here just thinking the decline of America could have been avoided because what I've been doing is compiling a lot of information, listening to a lot of podcasts, watching a lot of YouTube videos, doing a lot of Google searches. And I think I isolated the inflection point where America started the decline. And I've brought this up. I've brought this up before. It started with the late 60s, early 70s, the shipping of manufacturing offshore. Because I looked at it and I looked at it and I looked at it and I looked at it. And my Uncle Martin, I haven't talked to him. He's like almost 90 years old. I haven't talked to him in a while. But I remember a conversation with my Uncle Martin. He left Alabama, went to Detroit, started working in the Pontiac factory where he stayed until he retired. And he went in, he was able to get a job and he married my aunt Lillian and they had five children. And he was able to work that one job and I don't think that my uncle Martin even graduated high school and he was able to buy a house, get married, have children and provide for them. And we live in a world where that's just simply not possible anymore. There are different opportunities, but the opportunity for the uneducated unskilled person to enter a scalable position. Now, what do I mean by that? My uncle Martin started working at Pontiac on one line. And by the time he retired, he was a, a shop foreman. So there was upward mobility within the framework of working at Pontiac for a person who didn't graduate high school we live in a world where we have college graduates working in restaurants today is the 5th of july you need to enroll in the program or you need to enroll in intellectual property school and this is the reason that you need to enroll your future is waiting on you to make decisions today the decision that you make today will be reflected in the life that you have three years from now, five years from now, and 10 years from now. And if you make good decisions today, your life is going to be better three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. If you do not make good decisions, your life will be the same as it is today. And as someone who was homeless, as someone who's gone through incredible matriculation, I can tell you that taking action, massive action, and that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to enroll, that's taking action. And after you enroll, I'm asking you to join the study group. And after you join the study group, I'm asking you to go to the course. You've got to take action. You have got to take action because right now, we're about to have a recession. If you're not ready for the recession, it's too late to get ready for the recession. You are, your money is exposed to high inflation. Your money is exposed to high food prices. Your money is exposed to high gas costs. There's nothing you can do to prevent or prepare yourself for the situation because the situation is here. However, don't you want to be ready next time? Don't you want to be in a position where the, the recession or the crashing of the stock market or the crashing of crypto doesn't matter to you? Go ahead and enroll in a program which includes the Intellectual Property School, includes the Art of Profit Business School, includes Home Economics. You get all that. And you get a spiffy t-shirt. T-shirts are going to go out probably the beginning of August. And you're going to get so many with so many training, so much training that is going to make your life better today, literally six months from the day that you enroll in the intellectual property school or the art of profit business school, your life will be better. In three years, you'll be making more money, you'll be enjoying life, and you'll be having fun. That's the guarantee of enrolling in the program. So it's going to be in the description box or it's going to be in the um, first comment. You don't want to wait. 
Everyone wants to wait. Like literally I had 90 people pile in on the 30th. Stop waiting. Take action today because the sooner you take action is the sooner you begin that clock ticking on that three-year time period. Because to quote one of my neighbors growing up, Miss Sally Mae Jones, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. So whether you're preparing for your future or not, the future is coming. Enroll in the program today. Because the fabric of America has changed and we got rid of manufacturing because the world's number one economy was America. The world's number two economy was Detroit. In the 1950s, we had the first largest economy in Detroit. The city of Detroit represented the second largest economy behind America. And when we got rid of manufacturing, building stuff, creating stuff, providing opportunities for men, and this is a big, big part of it, that we have created a system where it is hard for the average person to enter an organization and matriculate. It's just not there. And this could have been avoided because I was like, this is what happened. You had a bunch of, bunch of fancy MBAs who figured out that if we took manufacturing out of America, where we were paying people a decent wage, they were manufacturing products that they could afford to buy because they were making a decent wage. And we started to ship manufacturing to these third world countries where they can pay people 120th, 120th of what they were paying Americans and get the same product, sell it for the same price and make way more money. And that is what has happened to America. But more importantly, with the abdication of the opportunity, we change the culture of America. And this is something that I've talked about quite a bit. I talked about men and this impacted men greatly. This really impacted men greatly. Um, what happened with men was it removed the opportunity to be a protector, a provider, a provisioner. It destroyed that. And over time, this is why we have what we have. I was, um, looking and then, you know, there, there's other variables. There's, there's so many variables. There's so much to, to unpack. Um, with the removal of wholesale manufacturing in America, we became more of a service type country where people make and buy, make product. Well, the products are made are not made here. Um, so we have that situation. And what happened is the American male The American male has been put in a position where he cannot succeed at a wholesale level. This just isn't like here, or there, or a small city or town here. This is pretty much across America. And what has happened, because this is something that I brought up in an earlier video is men are stagnating. Men are um, going through a lot of changes because I believe from the grand design, it is in the man's inherent makeup in nature to protect, to provide, to be a provisioner. And unless this man seeks out additional training because like once again in the case of my uncle martin 
All he had to do was show up. That's all he had to do was just show up. And they took him and they put him in this system where he could succeed. That is gone from America right now. That is, it's gone. And one of the biggest problems is, and I, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. It starts with men and because we removed manufacturing, we removed opportunity. We created this decline in America. And then this is something else that happened. The position of the woman has been elevated. Right now, statistically, there are more women in college than men. And what, what you have is a large segment of women who have priced themselves out of the dating market because these men who no longer have the opportunity to matriculate in a system, these women have gone to college, they're filling up these jobs, they're becoming managers. Many of these women are becoming high paid and hypergamy is there. So this woman, let's say her name is Sally. Sally works at Procter and Gamble. Sally makes $95,000 a year. Sally doesn't want to date Jake. That's the pizza delivery man. Sally will never date Jake, the police, the pizza delivery man, even though Jake is solid, he's stable, he's heterosexual. Jake is a pretty good dude, but because of his station in life, Sally ain't going to even see Jake. When Jake delivers Sally's pizza, she's like, thank you. And then she and her mom said, he was kind of cute, but he's, he delivers pizzas. Now here is going back to my uncle Martin because my uncle Martin was able to gain economic feasibility. He married my aunt Lillian, who was a math teacher. So back then when they got married, women looked at men completely different. If a man was honest, hardworking, of decent character, she would give him a shot. Now that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because if Jake, the pizza man was able to go and work at Ford and Jake is on the assembly line, and let's see, Jake, Jake is a union worker and Jake is making $45 per hour times 160 times 12. Jake is now making $86,000 a year. Sally would see Jake, even though he doesn't have a college degree because now Jake is making $86,000 a year. It would over time, Jake makes six figures. Jake has a house. Jake has two cars, one he drives, one he's working on. Jake has hobbies. Jake has, but since Jake doesn't have that opportunity to matriculate, he's invisible to Sally. And this causes a problem for Sally because Sally has outpriced, has priced herself out of the dating market due to her success. The number of men that Sally actually sees is very small. It's a very small circle of men. And this is the thing I can speak from an experience as a man of means. There is so much pussy out there. It's ridiculous because this is one of the reasons that when I go to the manosphere and I see the complaining and I see the whining and I see the disenfranchisement. I see the disgruntlement. I don't know what that feels like. I have no clue to what that feels like because where I am, I have my pick. I have my select choice. I don't know what it's like to be without female companionship. I, I have no clue what that feels like since rent a crate 
I have no, I have no, I, I, I don't know what it's like to go through life wanting the companionship of a woman, wanting her companionship, her physical companionship and her sexual companionship. I don't know what that's like because I have worked on myself. And for me, and this is something that happened when I was in high school. Um, when I was in high school, and I grew up in Adamsville, Alabama, which is kind of a suburb of Birmingham, Alabama. And during my youth, there were like two choices that you can get into once you graduated high school. You could work, go work in the coal mines or you can go work in the steel plant. And once again, to mirror the experiences of my uncle Martin, I had friends who would graduate high school and either would go work in the coal plant or would go work in the steel mill. And two years later, they had a house, they had a wife, they had kids because that was that opportunity. Now, as when I was in high school, I was a little bougie little kid. I was a little bougie. I was like, hey, I am not working in the coal mine. I'm not working in the steel plant because when I was a kid, you would see it frequently on the news. 13 miners trapped in the cave in. 15 miners trapped in the caveman. 30 all the time. You would see it all of the time. So I didn't want any parts of the coal mine. And another thing, Mr. Giles, one of my neighbors who worked in the steel plant, he was missing like these two fingers, industrial accidents. So from the fact that so many miners were getting caught in cave-ins and stuff, and the fact that I actually knew people who worked in the steel plant who had been the victims of industrial accidents, I didn't want any part of that life. I was just like, you know what my plan was before I actually knew better? My plan was to go to medical school. I had no clue to what I was getting myself into. So um, I graduated high school, done joined the military. One of the best opportunities, and this is an opportunity that has that changed. It used to be you didn't have to graduate high school to join the military. You cannot get in the military without a minimum of a high school diploma and I feel that in the future, you're going to have to have at least one to two years of college. I feel that's the way they're going. So that opportunity has been seriously diluted. But I joined the military and I got exposed to a lot of things. And then for a long time after exiting the military, I was in the situation where many men were, even though I had a halfway decent job. It didn't pay enough money for me to live the life that I wanted to live. And there was um, this is one of the reasons I became homeless, because I didn't make enough money. And once I fell into that trap of being homeless, which I think was one of the best things that ever happened to me, because that period of time that experience produced the product that you see today. All that, all that I am today came from that period because when I became homeless, I, I woke up because I feel that many people don't understand how America truly operates and many people are asleep. Many people are just out here existing with no real understanding of how America operates and I want to give credit to Earl Nightingale and Dr. Joseph E. Murray. These books expose me to how America actually operates, how America really functions, because I didn't learn any of this stuff in school. And due to massive self-education and massive action taking. I failed so many times. And one of the things that the moist men on YouTube like to do is point out my failures while obviously ignoring my successes. See, you have a failed YouTube channel, man. But I have 
two really successful YouTube channels that made me millions of dollars. How did you miss that? And I want to talk about with the decline of America and the elevation of women created a pernicious state because there are many men who are completely and utterly lost. They have no bearings. They were brought up by a single parent. And this has created a lot of feminine energy in these men. And these men cluster in groups of other feminine men. And until someone like me that points out that to seek out an echo chamber to commiserate is very feminine behavior. And because these men are unaware of their feminine behavior, unaware of what happened to them. And let's be 100% clear. What happened to these men wasn't their fault. What happened to these men was moves that were made in American culture that destroyed the matriculation process of an average man moving to middle class and this disrupted everything because what has happened is the average man is unaware of how bad this thing is. And the average woman is unaware of how bad this thing is. The average man think that the women are crazy. The women think the men are unreasonable and they don't understand that from a cultural standpoint, we've been destabilized. We have been uprooted from a cultural standpoint and it has created these huge segments of lonely, desperate men in this huge segment of lonely, desperate women. And criminal activity, and go ahead and Google this, the number of women going to jail for violent crimes is at an all time high. Why do we have so many men who like incels? They would literally become upset, grab a gun and go out and shoot innocent people. I feel that the way we're going, we're going to have our first female shooter very soon because if the, the violence level is trending up for both men and women because they're finding it hard to cope in society. And this is gonna be a big problem for society in the future. And this, once again, could have been all avoided if we did not have destroy our manufacturing sector. This right here has the single biggest impact on American culture today because we took away that matriculation process for an average regular dude to work his way up to a middle class lifestyle and have the economic means to get married, to support a family, to have children that has been destroyed and there's this guy that has this podcast called Modern Wisdom, which I think is really good. His name is Chris Williamson. And they were talking about how Tinder has created this large segment of men who are not having sex. The largest segment of men in, since 2010 who are not having sex because they do not qualify because these men are invisible to the average woman. These women are not looking for an average man. They're looking for a baller. They're looking for a boss on the economical side, or they're looking for an extremely handsome man. And these regular normal guys are invisible. They're simply invisible. And this is creating a cultural disconnect between men and women that is being filled by what I call manosphere hustlers who do not provide solutions, they provide 
Rimmer Crate, they, they provide an echo chamber for these men to come and commiserate, but no one is coming with solutions. So I'm about to talk about solutions. First of all, you must be aware of the problem. That's the first step. Number two, if you're an average man, and I'm about to say something that you don't want to hear, you need to improve your economics. You need to start a business or go back to school, whatever you can do to improve your economics, because as long as you are just a regular normal man with a regular normal salary, which in these United States is thirty-one to thirty-five thousand dollars a year, you will continue to be invisible unless you're dating women who make ten, fifteen, twenty thousand um, single mothers who have three, four kids. Because what's available to you, you don't want. You can date a single mother with four kids by three baby fathers. You can date her, but you don't want her because you don't want to build a relationship with someone that has that much organic baggage. Children and baby daddies, you don't want to deal with that. So what you need to do is to elevate yourself to a position where your options like I keep hearing this thing in the comments. You can't find women without children. Really. I have not seriously dated a woman with children since 2001. There are a ton of women who are between the ages of 25 and 35 who do not have children. There's a ton of them, but they can't see you. And like, just thinking of my situation, because I've elevated myself. Once again, I used to be just like you. I was a regular dude, working a regular job, and there was certain points in my life. When I was in the military, I was an extremely good shape from a physical standpoint and my body got me a lot of trim and then that I, I got to experience that I know what it's like to be as Ron's will says select I know what it's like to be select I know what it's like to be sleeping with multiple women and the women know I'm sleeping with multiple women and they don't care I know what that's like and one of the things that you as a regular normal guy you will never know what that feels like as long as you remain a regular, normal guy. And the impact on the economy is beyond significant because we have a bunch of people out here who cannot afford to participate in the economy. They cannot afford to do certain things. They cannot afford to go out to eat. They cannot afford to date. And this is, once again, due to no fault of the men that this opportunity, this matriculation process has been removed from the American economy. So what you have to do is what I did. Becoming homeless made me acutely aware that there was a problem in my life. And for, I was homeless almost three years and for two years and some months, I completely resisted taking accountability. So hear me, hear me well. Number one, you've been made aware of the problem. Number two, you have to embark on A, a level of self-education, or B, go back to school. That's, that's indisputable. You've got to do that. So... Once you go ahead and embark on this level of self-education, then you've got to take massive action. You've got to try things that scare you. I used to be afraid to go up and talk to women. And I put myself in a position where I would walk up and approach women when I was living in that boarding house. And it made me fearless. Like I don't have, I have no problems approaching any woman. When I was writing my relationship book, I used to approach women in bars, restaurants, 
and they invited me because they wanted to unload. They wanted to talk about the relationship thing. I was fearless. So you got to start doing things that you are afraid to do. So number one, massive level of self-education or go back to school. All right, and let's talk about going back to school. You cannot go back to school for a BS degree. You need to go back to school for a STEM degree, something STEM related. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. So either massive level of self-education or go back and get you a STEM degree, something that's going to be hard. Then number three, self-education or formal education. Then you got to become aware of where you are in society and what I mean. I, from a visual standpoint, would classify myself as a six, maybe an adjustable seven. I know what I look like. I am fully aware of what I look like. I'm 100% aware of what I look like. Now, I will approach a woman who's a 10 in a heartbeat because I'm fearless. And I'm gonna tell you why I will do that. One of the things that I have learned is if you approach a woman in person, I'm at a position, because when I used to do it, I would like, if I approached three hot women, I would get one. So that was a 30% success rate, okay? And as I worked on myself, worked on my, my mouthpiece, worked on my word game, that became 60 to 70%. So if I approached four hot women, I got three. Even though I am, from a visual standpoint, an adjustable seven or maybe a six. See, that what I look like doesn't matter. What matters is my activity, my boldness, and my ability to go up and talk to a woman. And because this is one of the things, and this is this is the guys, you, you gotta hear me. When you get deep into your masculinity and you go, even though I'm an adjustable six or seven, because I act like a 10, I get the results of a 10. Let me say this again. Even though I'm an adjustable six or seven, I get the results of guys who look way better than me because I take action. I'm about to tell you a little story. I was at the airport and there was this woman who on a scale of one to 10, she was a 15. Uh, she had green eyes, beautiful silky blonde hair. And this is what, this was the process. I was like, I want to fuck her. That's what I said to myself before I approached her. So I approached her and I was like, hi, my name is Glendon Cameron. What's your name? And she told me her name. And I was like, I started talking to her. There was no um, hookup or pickup lines. It was just normal conversation. And then about two minutes after talking to her, because I knew she was on my plane because she was sitting in my section. And I was like, you know what? We're both going to the same place. And I feel that when we get to where we're going and you do what you need to do and I do what you, you do what you need to do and I do what I need to do, I wanna slide my hard dick up in your pussy. And she looked at me. She looked at me and this is her response. Oh, really? Not no, not slapping me. Oh, really? And I said, yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fuck you so good. I'm gonna make you come so hard. And then she says, you know, it's been a year since I've had sex. And I was like, stop bullshitting. She says, you are the first man to approach me in 18 months. And when we got to where we were going, I found her hotel. She did what she needed to do. I did what I needed to do. And then we fucked. I don't tell you this story to impress you. I tell you this story to impress upon you that even though I look like this, I get the results of men who are tens with six packs, hard muscles, 
because I take action. And this chick, I ended up fucking her for about three years. And she didn't even live in Georgia. She would fly in for the dick. She would fly in. And this this, this is one of the things, guys, you got to let, because once again, in the moist, it's like, you look a certain way. I am acutely aware of how I look. But that doesn't impact the results that I get because I learned a long time ago. If you simply show up, you will get results. If you just simply show up, you get results. And that's what you guys have got to start doing. Number one, self-education is important because it's going to reveal insights, wisdom, and perspectives that you're unaware of. And then two, once you put the self-education or the formula education in the act, the massive act, you, you got to take shots. You got to take shots. You put that together, your life will change. Your life will change because that's the only way that I see you getting out of the funky situation that you're in because you're scared to take action. You are scared to approach that pretty woman. You're scared to start a business. You are scared and you're living in a state of fear. You gotta leave that place. You gotta step up. You got to participate in the game of life, to win in the game of life. Cause see, here's the thing. Most of you guys are not playing. You're just on the sidelines watching other people play.